ES Audio. Levi Root's success on Dragon's Den is legendary, and he speaks about it like it's a tale from mythical times. When he got home that night, he says he held the guitar he'd used in his pitch aloft and told his mum, I slayed the dragon. And he has been on a real hero's journey, his breakthrough coming at 48 years old when he had to borrow money just to get to the BBC studios. I left my flat that morning to go to Dragon's Den, unable to pay the taxi fare. I lived in Brixton. Dragon's Den was being filmed in London Bridge. So there, it was only about like a 12 pound journey in a taxi to, to get there. I couldn't even afford that. That was 2007. But the business was such a huge success, we're still talking about it now. That's what I mean by legendary. The Levi Roots brand has long expanded from reggae reggae sauce to include ranges and drinks, snacks, ice cream. Back then, investors Peter Jones and Richard Farley gave him £50,000 and took 40% of the equity. Levi still built up a fortune of an estimated £30 million. It's the stuff of movies. No, it really is. They're looking at two players from in Pop Boy. Ah. And, and they're looking at also somebody else that was in Star Wars. I can't believe it, but it is true and I can't wait to announce um, the director, which is the next um, thing we're going to announce um, pretty soon. I'm David Marlson from The Evening Standard. Levi will be appearing at our SME Expo in April, where he'll be talking about the power of a great brand. You can get free tickets by popping over to smexpo.co.uk. And he really is a great brand, a brilliant success story. But when we meet him, I wonder, given where he came from to get where he's got, did he ever worry it would all fall apart? Yeah, I suppose it's that fear is the, is the biggest driver for me. I, I, I know this is not just about me. My moment in the dinner, I knew this expressed Caribbean food and Caribbean cuisine in a massive way that I haven't in my own lifetime I haven't seen that. So I, I know how people feel about this. So if this fails, I, I know I can wheel up and come again, as we say in music, you know, and pull up the tune and start again, because I, I feel I'm capable of that. But I, I think if, if this fails, it would be massive for Caribbean food. And, and that's my greatest fear. And in some ways, that's one of the reasons why I, I work so hard on this. That's interesting, because we have shelves and shelves in those major supermarkets of reggae, reggae sauce, and all the other varieties. And when you see that, do you feel you're representing the Afro-Caribbean cause here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that that's that's the drive. You know, I do think one has to have a purpose um, when you're on a journey. And my purpose, as I said, is not just about me and my family. You know, this is about Caribbean cuisine. I, I've been lucky enough to, to be one of the representatives. Um, and I think, yeah, this is this is for this is for the, the you know for Caribbean people who for them this was unreachable and, and now it's there and I'm I'm really proud that my name is up there with it as well too. But I, I think it is the work of the people who have actually gone out and 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 tried the product, you know, before trusting it. That's the first thing. And then you get on to trusting it and, and, and you buy it after that. Was there a point when you realised you had a powerful brand? And when did you realise you might have a powerful brand? I suppose it's, it's the moment when failure hits you, you know, and, and you have to swallow failure. You know, a failure was like a gob trying to come up out of my, out of my throat. Um, whereas I was always trying to sell the sauce amongst my community. In You know, I thought it would be great. And I thought, Great idea, you know, I've got the sauce, perfect, I live in a Caribbean area, brilliant, I'm going to have a great market. But it actually failed, <laughs> it really did, because people are saying that, look, we make our own sauce, Levi, where the hell are you going with that, you know, and we probably can make it better, it's better than yours, because we're all Caribbean. But I, I didn't really bank on that when I started that my marketing thing. But it's the rejection of, 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 of that that led me to think that, well, I know the sauce was good because when I sell it at the carnival, you know, for years and years, everyone loves it. It was actually mainstream people were coming to my stall at the carnival, because that's what carnival is, people from everywhere that comes. It's not particularly Caribbean people that, that comes to carnival. So when I when I recognized it, I thought, well, if the sauce is good enough, maybe I need to find my market and, and not rely upon my local one. So I decided to go into the shires with it, you know, and, and you know, me and a couple of mates of mine, every weekend we would just mop out, you know, the, the next sort of lovely country market side that was going in the shires and we would turn up as the only black raster man with a guitar and 
and Caribbean sauce selling. And for a long while we did that. And it was while we were, you know, getting this magnificent attention from a mainstream market. We didn't particularly know mm. Caribbean food, but to see someone in a lovely country lane in the Shire singing with a guitar and selling a Caribbean sauce, for them it was it was something that more than it was just more than the sauce. And that's when I realized that they were relying upon Levi Roots bringing the sauce and not yeah. just somebody standing there and selling it. And to answer your question, that was the moment when I thought that, yes, this is it. I have got to write this song, which at that time, it wasn't really written. It was just a couple of verses I had, you know, to sort of sing along while I was selling the sauce. I call it the tour of the Shires we were doing <laughs> for about a year. And it was while doing that and merging the music with the food and see how they love my singing, playing, singing about the sauce and song that I realized it was a eureka moment. And I needed to merge the two together and make them one. Which is the bigger brand, Raggy Raggy Sauce or Levi Roots? I've got to say the music, I think because it's, I think the brand is really relying upon my creativity of creating, you know, what I do. I, I really think that's a magic, one of the magical part of it. Because if it's not authentically me, then it can't be Levi Roots. So I've got to be wanting to do it. And music is something that drives me to be able to create these recipes and write these books, you know, um, that I do and create these NPDs that we have to do so regularly. We've had over 50 products on the brand so far and written thousands of recipes. All of that kind of stuff is all inspired by the music. So to answer your question, I, I, I would say that the brand is the man on the music and the product comes afterwards, which is brilliant, by the way. But I think if you were to try and separate myself and the music from the Levi Roots product, then I, I think that the public would notice that and, and perhaps, you know, wouldn't be inspired as much as they are. But I wonder if, I mean... For a lot of founders, the aim is to sell that company and move on. Would you ever do that? Would Reggie Reggie survive without Levi Roots? No, absolutely not. I, I think it's important that the you know the essence of who I am as a person is is within the brand, and I and it's a magical thing that we've managed to put that in that it can never be taken away, because the, the minute you say Levi Roots, you know that is the person that you're talking about and we were lucky to say that the brand is not reggae reggae mm -hmm. reggae, reggae is a flavor you know it's a sauce it's one of a, a many products that we have but the brand is levi roots and in in ends it was a magical moment that we stamp my forever linkage with the brand where, wherever it go of course you've always got a, your sight on on you know on your target otherwise there is no point in in the journey well, I think for me, the most important thing is about who and who do you meet at the end of your journey? Who welcomes you? Meaning that who owns the brand after? Where does it go from where I leave it? That's the most important thing for me. And should I find the right partner? You know, absolutely. Because at some point, you know, you, you're going to come to your journey's end at some point. Yeah, not soon though, Levi, surely. Well, you, you say that, um, you know, I, I think for me, it is looking at the journey's end. It, it is very yeah. close. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's a, I'm, I'm, I've just started a, a new family. My son, Christopher, is only 10. And I think it's a, it's a massive opportunity for me to be a uh -huh. proper father now, you know, because I, I think I really miss being that in my early days of my other kids who are much older. You know, I wasn't the best father that I could be back then, to be honest with you, Dee. But I really do think that I am now. And and I think part of the, those kind of stuff that you're, you're talking about will have to go hand in hand if I'm going to want to do the best for Christopher as much as I as I want to. So you can never say never, as I said, but I do have a plan and the plan involves him, me giving him as much time as possible to maybe have a quicker chance to do it rather than how long it took me to recognize, um, you know, that you've got something in you. And for someone like a Pete, Peter Jones to, to say, hey, OK, I can make a few calls for you and do what you can do. It took me until I was 48 before I managed to burst through and do this fantastic thing. I want Christopher to have the opportunity to be able to do that, just like any other child that grows up and have a loving family and has the opportunity to be able to do that family time has to be one of the hardest things for people who are starting up their own business, who have big ambitions, making enough time for the family. It's really difficult, isn't it? Should everybody strive to do more of that or do you have to put the business first? And having been through all that, did you get the priorities right, Levi? No, I, I got it absolutely wrong. I, 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 you know, hands up, you know, toes down everything, you know, com completely wrong. Um, 
But wrong is right in some ways, because I knew that I had a fantastic opportunity to, to, to build this business. And, and it, it takes 150% of your energy to be able to put into building something that you and everybody else thinks that there's an opportunity in it. But only you alone can do it. There is a certain amount of sacrifice, you know, and and some of the quotes that I always quote is to do with Shakespeare because I, I, I love it. And he does say you have to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. And, and what it means by that is that you will have to make sacrifices when you're on your journey and it's inside of you. And, and for me, the opportunity was there when I kicked off with Reggae Reggae. And the fame came so quick, but the opportunity was there. And, and it was just so amazing when it came and it was so quick and aggressive. So you, I had to take my eyes off some things um, to be able to grab the opportunity. Regrettably so, yes. But looking back and seeing what is brought bad and the opposite that I can give my loved ones now, I see, as, as I've always said, I don't think anything is a mistake. It's, it's feedback. Mm. Um, and if you ask me, would I do it again? Absolutely, I would. I would follow my dreams and go, you know, with how I'm thinking is and then. But I have to have a purpose ahead of me of why I'm doing this. And as I said, what I want to do with Christopher now and, and what I can do with him now because of that journey, it absolutely makes me smile. Unlike Levi, we haven't got any money. So here's some generic reggae because we can't afford Bob Marley. Listening to the ads instead of skipping them might help us with that. And so would hitting the follow button on your podcast provider. That tells us places like Apple and Spotify that someone thinks this is a show worth listening to. So they suggest it to others and we get bigger audiences. And if you've got idle hands right now, go have a look at the SME Expo lineup at smexpo.co.uk. It's being held at the XL London on April 25th and 26th. Tickets are free. So was that Dragon's Den experience an overnight life-changing event? Yeah, it was. I mean, I, I left my flat that morning to go to Dragon's Den, unable to pay the taxi fare to get to the Dragon's Den. And I lived in Brixton. Dragon's Den was being filmed in London Bridge at the time, 2007. So there it was only about like a 12 pounds journey in a taxi to, to get there. I couldn't even afford that. It, it was that bad. I had absolutely spent everything in my dream of saying this, this my opportunity had come. Everybody had said to me, Levi, don't take the guitar, don't go on Dragon's Den. If you go with the guitar, you're going to get slayed. Nobody had ever sang. It was just a complete week, maybe about two weeks of the time when I was spotted until when I got onto Dragon's Den. So it was two weeks of complete negativity from everyone. When I was adamant that I want to sing, I want to take my guitar, I want to do something different. I feel better when I'm me. I don't want to go when I'm pretended. I say, no, Viva, you, you're crazy. You're going to get slaughtered by Peter Jones. And I'm like, who the hell is Peter Jones? I've never seen Dragon's Den, never watched it. <laughs> trying to stay away from my kids, trying to show me what, it, you know, what it's like. If I go as me, and I'm comfortable with my guitar, but like my, like a, like your comfy blanket um, that makes you you and makes you comfortable. Then, then you can be you, and and that's what I did. I I went as me, and um, the proudest moment is coming back home, um, in a taxi um, sent by the BBC because <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna get bloody home <laughs> after after the day because I didn't I didn't have a return plan to get. <laughs> but I think one of the magical things was I remember getting that taxi by the BBC to send me home after slaying the dragons and doing the most amazing um, thing ever, you know, and going home and um, I. I phone my mom in in the taxi, um, and and tell her that mom, you know, I'm the dragon slayer. That's what I said, and it was the most happiest thing for me to be able to do that. She was just so over the moon. Were you holding your guitar close? It's your defense, you know, whatever it is that that inspires you. Mine's is music, you know. I say to kids nowadays, find you when you're the best of you. I am the best Levi I can be when I'm thinking about music or when I'm playing it, whether I'm spinning some disc or I'm playing my guitar and singing some song. As long as it's music, then I, I'm the best person that I can be. And I say to people, find the best of you because we all have it in us. We, we have something which really inspires us. And a lot of times we don't connect that to do with our business. I think it's a magical thing if you can, if you can twirl it into your, 
into your everyday lives so it, it becomes naturally you. I think it can only be a good thing. One thing for people who watch Dragon's Den and those people thinking about going on it, they probably want to know what does a dragon do afterwards? Are they really closely involved? The best way I can answer that, actually, I mean, because I don't know all of them that, you know, that closely. But I think it depends on what kind of business person you are. There is a thing that the dragons do that a lot of them do invest in the person and not the product. I think Peter is a fine example of that. I'm not saying that because he did it with me, but I think even when you look at Peter's pitch, the way that he invests, it will always have to do with the personal, the personality type thing because he, he will go. Because his thought is that if you have a product, it cannot sell itself. It will take somebody to be able to sell that brilliant product or even that product that's rubbish, but it's a fantastic salesman and he will be able to take it through. So it, it will depend on, on, on who the investor is, you know, and who the investee, um, how that relationship co comes along. For, for me, it was precisely that. Um, all the ladies just absolutely bow down to Peter when they come, come to him. And then comes along, you know, this Rasta man, you know, he comes along with the guitar. And, and yet they're both, you know, really having this most amazing relationship in business and this magnificent staying power in business, which I've come to learn that is perhaps the most fantastic tool you need in business um because especially within tv business like investments that those comes and goes within a year or two and you never hear anything else of it you know it's great the public will buy it one or two times because it's on tv but it doesn't mean that they're going to be inspired to go back again and, and rebuy and that's what happens to a lot of business and peter and i have managed to, to sidestep that by creating you know a fantastic brand and some brilliant and fantastic product but more importantly that relationship that the public knows that how we are together that's been intact from day one and i'm so grateful for the man that you know that we still you know we still have that it sounds like the kind of story you see in the movies doesn't it levi and it is or it's going to be yeah yeah it's absolutely amazing i'm i'm glad you touched on that as you can see the smile on my face just widens like nicely when you said i said can have a chance to mention yeah because it is again one of these fantastic dreams that when i do hover above myself and say what a jammy bastard you know you're down there that's something else is, is happening that a movie has been made about this brilliant journey um, that, that, that we're in. And it's just so fantastic. So, you know, some amazing producers, you know, named one. It's just so great. And I can't believe it, but it is true. And I can't wait to announce um, the director, which is the next um, thing we're going to announce um, pretty soon. What's really important, though, and what everybody wants to know, who will play Levi Roots? I was sent a list of, I can't say all, I was sent a list of because there is a list of, of, of players that look, I was really inspired by, by ones. And I can name that. They're, they're looking at two players from in Top Boy. Ah. I feel like I'm not going to really say no name of the one. Two characters in, in Top Boy. And, and they're looking at um, also somebody else that was in Star Wars. Oh, like we yeah. all know who that so, is. Just at an early stage and the thoughts of what may be okay with it. So, we yeah, yeah it's, it's those, and I'm not really the guy who played Lando Carlisian, yeah. is it? Yeah. Not yeah. that Star Wars guy. Any one of those three, any one of those three <laughs> to play me. Yeah. There would have to be a sub nice dreadlocks week week though. And of course, the other question is, who is Peter? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I know he probably want to play, him, play himself up, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, that'd be an interesting one. Yeah, that'd be an interesting one. Yeah. And just finally, you're going to be appearing in the Evening Standard's SME Expo. Will the guitar be coming too? Yeah, as I said, you know, my music is my art and soul. And if I'm being the truly viral, which, which I want to bring to the public for at Expo, then I have to come with my A game. And that in includes my, my wonderful guitar, which her name is Miriam, by the way. Um, so I'll be walking with Miriam. And I've got to ask, why Miriam? Miriam is my grandma, and as you know, you know, she's the one that plays a massive, you know, part in my life. You know, the sauce and everything is dedicated to her. And, um, yeah, and she's the cat, the dog and everything to me. That was Levi Roots. For more business interviews, news and analysis, go to standard.co.uk forward slash business or pick up the Evening Standard newspaper. How to be a CEO is back on Monday morning. I'd love to see you then.